Hello my soccer universe, let's do this. I've promised you to look around the top 15 leagues of Europe. I will of course put a lot of F, uh, emphasis on usually the top four leagues where we also run through results and then we'll go through the other leagues uh, with less and less and less and less detail. What I want to also include is for at least the top few uh, the 538 ratings because I think this is interesting to see as well where it is available I have two leagues that's namely Ukraine and the Czech Republic where I don't have the 538 ratings which I find a little bit um, sad that they don't have these but for all other 15 I do and we will look into that so let's start right away with Spain La Liga we had the following results and again in the reverse order uh, we talked yesterday Valencia beating Betis 2-1 uh, via Real Leganes 2-1 uh, Real Madrid against Atletico Bilbao 3-0 Getafe in a big one against Sevilla 3-0 um, with two red cards on either side but the one for Sevilla came kind of late Levante 2-2 against Espanyol um, also Levante kind of hampered by a red card but Espanyol taking twice the lead then um, Saturday, Barcelona, Real Sociedad, 2-1, Rayo against Huesca, 0-0, Eibar, Atletico Madrid, 1-0 uh, for Atleti, um, meaning that Atleti is still sort of hanging in there without having really much a chance. I think Barcelona needs to win two more games and then it's done and dusted. Celta Girona 2-1, a big win for Celta, and on Friday evening already Alaves against uh, Valladolid 2-2. Uh, which gives us the following standings. Um, we have, of course, Barcelona on top with 77 points. A very interesting form curve. Uh, win, draw, win, draw, win. So we know where this is going. Um, Atletico Madrid um, has 68 points. It is 9 points. Seems too much. It seems absolutely too much that there's anything happening. And the Real Madrid, 64. Those are the teams that are pretty safe in the Champions League, although Real Madrid is not playing all that great. For fourth spot, though, uh, the race is heating up. We have uh, Getafe, 54, Valencia, 52, Sevilla, 52, and maybe Bilbao, 46, uh, and Alaves, 46. I think Bilbao, Alaves are out of it, but there are three vying for this last spot, and I honestly think that Valencia will get it. Uh, Let's see who they're playing in the next round. Getafe plays um, at home to Real Madrid. Valencia at Atletico Madrid and Sevilla at Rayo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That would favor Sevilla again. But uh, we have to see where things are going. Um, as I said, Alaves 446 in 8th spot. Betis uh, 43 in ninth, and Espanyol 42. This basically rounds out the upper half. Uh, and, you know, Espanyol is coming back up again after they were already pretty close to the relegation zone. Uh, speaking of relegation battle, it's very interesting in Spain. The next three teams I don't think will get in there. This is Real Sociedad at 41, Leganes at 41 and Eibar at 40. But at Villarreal with 36, here we start uh, thinking relegation. Celta Vigo 35, Girona 34, Levante 34. And then Valladolid 32, Rayo 28 and Huesca 26. I think it really looks bad for Rayo and Huesca already. Valladolid uh, maybe has a chance. Levante might get in there, which is something we didn't see. And Girona has lost at least five in a row. I mean, we see the form curve. They are absolutely hurting at the moment. Uh, and if you look at the form curve, Celta is getting itself out of, out of there. Uh, Villarreal is also starting to win again. So um, it might be that Girona, Levante and Valladolid are in big trouble here. Uh, very quickly, the 538 standings uh, for La Liga. Uh, just giving you the percentages for the final Champions League spot. Getafe 39%, Sevilla 28%, Valencia 33%. So they still, probably because of two points ahead, give it to uh, Getafe, but uh, projected standings, Getafe 61 points, Sevilla 60 points and Valencia 60 points, so it is very, very, very tight. And same thing goes for rele relegation. Villarreal looks safe with 5%, but I think this is due to a really good rating. Celta 17%, Girona 20%, Levante 24%, Valladolid 49% relegated, 
Rayo 90% and Wesca 96%. So I think Rayo and Wesca is probably what we're gonna see uh, of the teams going down. Okay, next league up England in the Premier League where we had the following results. Results. The a big surprise yesterday is of course Arsenal against Palace 2-3. I haven't seen the highlights, I should have watched it today. Liverpool a uh, relatively professional win 2-0 over Cardiff. Um, and Cardiff had, we will see that later, had a really big win during the week. 2-0 at Brighton. This actually puts Cardiff in striking distance of Brighton. There are only three points difference and we'll see uh, where this will go. Uh, Everton United 4-0, Newcastle Southampton 3-1. Uh, I think both of these teams are safe from relegation. Bournemouth Fulham is a 1-0 for Fulham. Now they start winning uh, that they are relegated, but this is how you would almost expect it. Watford 2-1 against uh, Huddersfield away. Uh, Westman and Leicester play out a 2-2 draw. Wolves Brighton uh, goalless draw and City Tottenham, the big game of the weekend. 1-0 for City. Slightly lucky, but... That's exactly what you need if you want to become champions. And as I said, we had during the week Cardiff beating Brighton, heating up the um, uh, the relegation battle there again. Because I thought Card Cardiff is done and dusted. There's one game left. This is between Chelsea and Burnley. And we'll see now in the standings um, the imp uh, implications of that one. I'm just... Computer collection is faster. We have, of course, in first place at the moment, Liverpool. For now, they're still in first. And it is an absolute nuts race. I keep repeating it. Uh, if you don't win, you're basically going to lose the championship. And we have the Manchester Derby that will set things even again. And this might be the last time we see a flip-flop on the top of the league. Um, I personally hope not. But... Um, it looks very much like it. Um, so Liverpool 35 points, uh, 35 games played, 88 points. Manchester City 34 games played, 86 points. It is still a, a rather uneven table with a lot of 35 and 34 played. Uh, Spurs 67 points is in third. Arsenal 66 points um, and Chelsea 66 points. But Chelsea has the game uh, is playing a game today, so they can actually go all the way in third again. Uh, which is crazy, honestly, and we have to see how Chelsea will now respond uh, to because they seemed like they are going for a safer a Europa League spot. That Arsenal is now uh, in the run, and Arsenal now loses um, against Crystal Palace. So it's a very crazy fight, and Spurs is also not safe. Although I think Spurs cut the corner, especially with the midweek Champions League. I think this will give them enough. Um, motivation going forward. United with 64 points, horrible loss at Everton and I don't think United will make it into the Champions League spots unless they can get a win against City during during the week and then they would also only go, they would go uh, at 67 points but with a game more. So it is really, really tight here. And uh, frankly, interesting. Although I think the race for this uh, for the two Champions League spots behind Liverpool and Manchester City, it's a little bit of a snail's race because all of them are not having great forms. You see, all four have lost this weekend. Um, Everton is at the moment best of the rest, but with a game more, uh, 49 points. Watford 49 points as well. Leicester 48 points. Uh, Wolves 48 points and again always the one that's uh, level but one game behind has a game uh, one point behind has a game more so uh, have to see how it goes um, that's the top half of the table bottom half is West Ham 43 Crystal Palace 42 Newcastle 41 Bournemouth 41 Burnley has the game uh, this evening if they would get a win, I think they would rid themselves of any uh, thoughts of relegation. They are in good form. and But I think even with a loss, they won't be uh, bothered with relegation. I think it is relatively safe. They have 39 points. Southampton has 36 points. Uh, it might get tight, but I honestly don't think so. It's really between Brighton and Cardiff, if I have to look at it. Uh, let's quickly see. Southampton uh, is playing at Watford. Brighton is playing the next at Tottenham. I think this will probably do it. 
Fulham Cardiff. If Cardiff wins that, they're level on points. They just have the worst goal differential. So, yep, uh, this might be uh, one of the more exciting uh, things to watch. Now, Cardiff has a game more. That might also uh, mean something. So we'll see. I personally think that Cardiff will be the team relegated, uh, but we have seen um, miracles before. Fulham and Huddersfield are, of course, relegated very quickly. Premier League, 538. Uh, City at the moment with 57%, Liverpool with 43%. I told you, this is the big one, City against Tottenham. It was much, much closer before. For the Champions League uh, spots, we have Tottenham 89%, looks safe, Chelsea 49%, already in Arsenal 54%. So um, those two make it, and United, uh, those two are battling kind of for the last spot, and United is out. And for relegation, um, Brighton 16% to be relegated, Cardiff 84%, also pretty much what we have uh, been saying. Let's go through Italy. I'm going through these leagues now in the order that they are in the current UEFA standing. I think this makes to me the most sense. We have a Monday night game in Italy as well between Napoli and Atalanta, which could have huge um, implications for the fourth Champions League spot, uh, especially if Atalanta gets a win. Uh, if they don't get a win, then uh, this actually might put Atalanta out of the running. So uh, we'll see. We will see. A draw will leave the pro probably in. I think they're not out, out if they lose, but let's see. Uh, Juve, a crown now, it's done. They're champions. 87 points. Napoli cannot do anything anymore uh, at 67 points. And Napoli is not that great in form. Inter has 61 points. Looks safe uh, to be among the top four. And now we get to the snails race. Milan with a horrible draw, I have to say, against Parma, 56. This is a game they should have uh, turned around. Roma, 55, gets only the draw, so it remains a point between those two. Uh, Inter kind of did not uh, blew it all, which would have been such an Inter move to kind of uh, let Roma go through. The, fi the final program for Milan is actually favorable if it wouldn't be that Milan has to play teams that play for relegation or have something to play for. So I'm not all that... It looks like Milan is going to make it. Everybody's saying Milan is going to make it. And I have this gut feeling they're probably just going to miss out by a point or by goal differential or something like that. Uh, the f advantage that Milan holds over both Roma and Atalanta is that they hold a the tiebreaker over those two. So that's a cap in the feather that they have. So we have Roma 55, Atalanta 53. If Atalanta wins in Naples today, they are going level with Milan. And again, due to the tie tiebreaker, they will be behind. Otherwise, they have the uh, better goal differential as far as I can tell. Um, Torino 53 points is also in there. It's also, um, they actually might make a challenge for this fourth uh, Champions League spot as well. I mean, it's only three points and they have to play Milan at home. Lazio 52, this is kind of the last on the edge there. I think when we look at Sampdoria 48 and Cagliari 40, and remember Cagliari was, in, um, was threatened to be relegated. They had a pretty good run as of late, and um, I saw when they were playing Milan. They, this, this is a good team, so uh, quite happy to see them there. The bottom half is led by Fiorentina. Who were in a horrible run in Fiorentina are the draw kings. I mean, they're drawing uh, more or less half of the games are draws with, with, with Fiorentina. Uh, have a new coach. Remains to be seen. Sassuolo 38, Spal 38, Parma 36. Um, let's see, relegation. It seems almost decided. Genoa 34, Bologna 34. Bologna actually in with a good string of results, might not get relegated. Udine 33 is a little bit uh, on the edge, but I think Empoli 29, it's a four-point differential. Frosinone, Kievo is already done. Frosinone will probably join soon. I think it will be those three, Empoli, Frosinone and Kievo, that will get relegated. Um, let's check what 538 is saying uh, in that regard. We have uh, Champions League spots, Nap Napoli is more or less a certainty, Inter 96%, Milan 41%, Atalanta 31%, and Roma 25%. Lazio, they give 4%, Turin, they give 3%. So, 
There you go. And for relegation, um, chance to be relegated. Frozen on almost a certainty. Empoli 79%, Udine 12%, Genoa 4%, Bologna 5%. So Bologna certainly suddenly looks much, much better. To the Bundesliga we go. I yesterday made the headline that we have a tight race also in the Bundesliga and I didn't mention it in the video. Those are the things. It's all more or less unscripted. I do some preparation and then you then think of that. Oh, how did I think about that? Anyway, let's look at the results. Um, I think we have a Monday night game between... Oh, let, let me just check. Summary 22nd is today. Yes, we have a Monday night game between Wolfsburg and Frankfurt. Uh, thanks to uh, Frankfurt's European travels, I guess. Uh, but that's not... Uh, too bad. The Monday night games are a really hairy issue in um, German soccer. The results from the weekend. We have Hertha Hannover goalless. Dortmund getting a 4-0 at Freiburg. That was a huge result for them. It keeps them in contention. They're still a out big outside shot, but it keeps them in contention. And Bayern almost dropped uh, a point, which would have helped Dortmund to get, get in the lead. Schalke Hoffenheim 2-5. Schalke is not looking good. Hoffenheim makes a challenge for European spots, I guess. Leipzig Gladbach was a huge one for Champions League qualification. Now Leipzig um, is in good standing there. Augsburg reads itself for of relegation, uh, at least um, uh, playoff troubles with a 6-0 over Stuttgart. It must be devastating for Stuttgart uh, to be that wiped off the field. Leverkusen, Nürnberg 2-0, Bayern, Bremen, we talked about it, was in the end a deserved victory, but it was uh, not an easy one for Bayern. 1-0 over Bremen, Bremen was defending really, really well, and Mainz uh, beat Düsseldorf 3-1. That means the table looks as follows. We have, of course, Bayern on top, one point ahead of Dortmund. Um, Leipzig now 61 points, they are on a great win streak. Uh, at least five in a row. Frankfurt 52. Can, if, a, if they win today uh, against Wolfsburg, uh, I think they will separate themselves from, from Gladbach and will look good uh, going into um, the Champions League next season, which given their good form in Europe and so on, this would be deserved. But you know, they had a loss last week, kind of uh, puts some doubt in me. Uh, Gladbach 51 points. It doesn't look really all that well. Hoffenheim 50. I think Gladbach um, has to also watch Leverkusen at 48 points. Bremen, I don't think they will get uh, in there. They are at 46. Wolfsburg 45. That's the top half of the table. Uh, then we have Düsseldorf 37, Hertha 36, Mainz 36. Those are kind of a little bit more disappointing. I mean, Düsseldorf is not disappointed, but Hertha, that looks a disappointing spot, given that they actually started well uh, this season. Freiburg 32, Augsburg 31. I, although they're close, they have nothing to do with relegation anymore. Schalke 27, I think it's also safe because it's six points to Stuttgart. And Nürnberg might have a shot at getting Stuttgart. This might be a huge disaster for Stuttgart. We're actually uh, celebrating a centenary. Uh, uh, is it 125 years Stuttgart? Is it a centenary? Uh, it is, I, I, I think it's 125 years. It would be absolute debacle if they got relegated. But you know, other teams are uh, used in the second league to rebuild and uh, come back stronger. Uh, see Köln, see Hamburg. So, will be interesting. Hannover looks pretty much uh, down, down and out at 15 points. And let's just check 538. Uh, for that, uh, for Champions League spots, Leipzig is, seems a certainty. Bayern 87% to win the league over Dortmund with 13%. For the Champions League spots, we have Eintracht 51%, Hoffenheim 26%, Gladbach 15%, Leverkusen 6%. So I think Frankfurt is probably going to make it. And relegation, Schalke only 1%. So it's really Stuttgart 39% relegated thanks to the uh, relegation playoff. Uh, Nuremberg 90%, Hannover 98%. It's not all... Uh, secure yet, but we know where it's headed. Okay, off to France, where we have since yesterday PSG finally 
is over the line and it's not due to their own doing it's because there was a nil nil draw for Lille which handed PSG already the league before they even played against um, Monaco but which they won 3-1 in their wonderful Notre Dame jersey Saint-Etienne wins at Reims 2-0 not Amiens 3-2 to lose. Lille uh, was of course goalless. We talked about that then. Day before Akan wins in Nice uh, 1-0. Nîmes Bordeaux 2-1. Strasbourg Montpellier 1-3. Guingamp Marseille 1-3. Lyon Angers 2-1. And Dijon Rennes 3-2. That was uh, how the weekend went. And let's quickly look at there was also, yes, of course, during, during the week, uh, PSG losing at not 3-2, where PSG basically uh, missed the third match point. If you see the highlights, it did not result in any goal, but Buffon was way out playing right defender um, for no reason whatsoever. It was one of the crazier things that I've seen. Standings now um, is we have... PSG champions 84 points. We knew that. Lille 65, Lyon 59. I think those three in the Champions League of those Saint Etienne might have a shot uh, at 56 points. The third spot in France is actually a conditional fixed spot um, depending on the Europa League winner and also could have um, other, otherwise they would be in the playoff. Marseille 54. It, they might get into Europa League, but I don't think Champions League. And that's basically it. Montpellier 51, Reims 48, Nice 48, uh, Nîmes 46. Nîmes has a great season, I uh, have to say. And Strasbourg 44, that's the top half. Rennes 43, Angers 41, Nantes 40 in 13th, Bordeaux 38. I'm looking at the relegation. To lose 36. And now, if you really want Monaco at 32 points and Amiens at 32 points, might be a little bit afraid, but it's really Dijon at 28, although they won now and Caen also won, so that's why it looks a little bit tighter. But miracles need, need to be happening for those two to get out. Guingamp with 24 points. Those three will be the ones rele relegated. Let's quickly look. Um, Probabilities, uh, Champions League, Lyon 74%, Saint-Etienne 20%, Marseille 7%, as I said, those are the teams. And for relegation, Monaco 2%, Amiens 6%, it's really Dijon 50%, Caen 74%, Guingamp 92% and 50% because there's a relegation playoff in France as well. Let's go further. Who do you think is the sixth best league, at least to the UEFA ratings? I was a little bit surprised, but it's the Russian Premier League and I'm most surprised because they are um, they're not all that great in Europe the Russians although I have to say I liked how is it standing in Russia at the moment 24 match uh, game display so it's six match days to go Zenit with 51 points is in first Lokomotiv 43 and Krasnodar Forge 42. I think Zenit is probably pretty safe to say uh, they are Russian champions again. Lokomotiv and Krasnodar look good. Although uh, C at CSK uh, at 41 has probably a say in that and Spartak at 39 could also get in there. So this is the top in Russia. Let's see the chances according to 538. And you know for those leagues I'm gonna look only at the top because otherwise this video is becoming an hour and that's might be too much as i said zenit wins it 96 percent pretty certain in the champions league they have Lokomotiv at 81 percent uh krasnodar 58 percent to make it for a champions league uh csk 47 percent and spartak has an outside of chance 12 percent then we go further portugal is the next best league with benfica actually being uh, probably a little bit disappointed that they got bounced by Eintracht Frankfurt. Where is Portugal? Here is Portugal. Primera Liga. As it stands, it's still a tight title race. No. Uh, let me see the table. Yeah, Porto has a game more play. So Porto 75%. If Benfica wins the next game, which is against Maritimo, should be a win, then Benfica goes ahead again. Uh, it is again tight, tight battle. 75 for Porto, 72 for Benfica. Sporting 67, Braga 64. That's the that basically rounds out the top places 
uh, the first two go in the Champions League and next two in the Europa League. Morenci, Guimaraes and Belenenses have no shot going anywhere. Let's quickly look of how it's what 538 says with the chances of each of these teams. It was really a bad week for Portugal. Both Portuguese teams uh, eliminated. Uh, 538 says they will um, finish level on points. 54% for Benfica, 46% for Porto. It is super, super, super tight. Uh, let's go to the next one. That's the Ukraine. That's the one where I don't have 538 um, numbers. I'm sorry about that, but the Ukrainian Premier League. On top we have Shakhtar Donetsk with 63 points, Dynamo Kiev 56 points. Uh, I think those two will be in the Champions League and Champions League uh, playoff. Alexander is 44, Mariupol 33. It's pretty uneven. Uh, Luhansk 32 points and uh, Lviv uh, in the championship group rounds everything out. Shakhtar and Dynamo Kiev, the two big boys, uh, will go on. Belgium is the next league that we're going to look at. The Jupiler League. It is so... Uh, the, the Belgium system is really... Uh, confusing because they have a championship group and they have two uh, Europa League groups that play a playoff against each other. It's even messier. I, I honestly don't know the... Um, I honestly don't know exactly how it works. I have not spent too much time in it. I just know they have a championship group with the top six um, going in. And I think... Yeah. Promotion, yes. So the first two, uh, first one is going in the Champions League, second one is going Champions League qualification, third is Europa League, and fourth then plays uh, in a playoff with the Europa League groups uh, below. Henk 44 or Genk 44, please tell the uh, lab now it's Henk or Genk. I, uh, my Flemish is not that gr uh, great. Club Brugge uh, 38. Probably hanging on to the Champions League uh, qualification spot. Antwerp 35 and um, Liege 33. Yeah, those are top four. I don't think that Anderlecht has big ch uh, chance. And Ghent, Ghent also 26. Uh, Anderlecht actually... No, let's see. Who won? Uh, it was Genk. So they take the points from the previous competition and then it's added on as nothing halved as it is in Austria. So sorry, I'm a little bit unprepared for this one, but uh, it is kind of complicated. Who does 538 uh, think will win the title? Genk, Henk, uh, 30, 82%. Club Brugge, uh, 18%. Also 88% for a Champions League. Uh, Liege, only 8% to make Champions League. Antwerp, only 5%. So that basically says it all. Then we go to Turkey. That's the next one. Bajakshi here is probably for the first time becoming a uh, Turkish champion. It's 62 points. Galatasaray 59 points. I mean, they had a recent bad form of results, so remains to be seen. It's always hard to get over this finishing line, and it's five games to go. Three points. I think Galatasaray will like their chances. Besiktas at 53 points. That looks Europa League. Trabzonspor 52. Uh, also is Europa League. I think Alanya, Antalya, no chance, Rizespor, uh, Ditto. So let's see, 538 says, Bajakshi here is still a 77% chance of winning it, Galatasaray 21%, Bajikdos is still hanging at 3%. And now for the Champions League, 98%, Bajakshi here, Galatasaray 74, Bajikdos 27, Trabzonspor, nah, 1%. Don't think it's gonna happen. Then we go to the league that I know best, Austria, where unfortunately my team Lusk is, has not won a game in a long time, but uh, they only have lost one as well. So, But the 2-2 two -two at, um, two -two at Austria was kind of one where you need to win. Still, it is. Salzburg will be the new champions at 37 points uh, at the moment. And again, this is now um, the points we have, so it's kind of much tighter than it should be. Lask, 28 points. Looks like a pretty good Champions uh, League um, spot. 
Uh, then Wolfsburg in the Europa League, 22%, St. Burton 28%, and Sturm 18%. They all go in the Europa League, and but there will be a playoff, and this is also kind of complicated. The sixth place team has no chance, but the seventh place team, that means that once that means the relegation group, gets into a playoff against, I think, the fifth place team, and then uh, the winner plays um, uh, against the fourth place team. Absolutely nuts what they're doing but more for us Salzburg will win the Austrian league uh let's quickly check the chances I mean I think it's 99% yes it's greater than 99% last game 98% in the Champions League which uh at least in playoffs this is a huge huge result for them uh that has to be said unfortunately we might lose our coach to Wolfsburg next league Switzerland is already decided with young boys after years of failure getting their second consecutive title and in record-breaking fashion. I think this, this is the earliest that ever a Swiss team uh, made the title. So young boys already done. They're currently playing even nil-nil at Xamax. Doesn't really matter. At the moment as it stands 79 points if this remains uh, Basel 56. Pretty safe Champions League spot, then Thun 40 and Lugano 37, Sion 37, Luzerne 37, Gassan Gallen 36. It's really tight for this final um, uh, for this final Europa League spot. And even relegation. I mean Zurich 34, Xamax 30. And Grasshoppers doesn't look good. Grasshoppers, I cannot I actually don't get how bad they are. Uh, this is a huge team in Switzerland. But they're not making it. So yeah. But young boys, very happy for uh, them. There is of course a friendship between Lusk and the young boy fans. So let's see. Young boys has it already in Basel is more or less in the Champions League. Relegation, Grass was 95% and uh, uh, Samax Neuchatel 42% in uh, to get relegated because of uh, relegation playoffs. It's tied 6% for Zurich to get in there. St. Gallen 3%, Zion 3%. Let's move on, Czech Republic. As I said, I don't have 538 numbers here. It's going to be a long video, but I hope you enjoy this because it's really, you get the full roundup in a way. Who is in lead? Slavia Prague. You wouldn't expect anything else. I mean, they just lost on the weekend uh, against Schlin. But other than that, uh, they had a good Europa League form. Um, so, looks interesting. Uh, they again have this, they also have a championship group, as I can see right now, they are not quite there yet. So they have one more to play and then there's a championship round. So for the championship round, let, let, let's see who's going in. Uh, Slavia Prague, Pilsen is going in there. Sparta, 54 is already with uh, some distance. Jablonets, 48. Ostrava, 45. And then it's between Liberec and Sigma, Ol Olomut. I think Ostrava will make this at 40. Uh, at a uh, uh, Liberate will make this with 42 points. They, um, let's see, do they have a direct competition? Karvina, that's the bottom team, and Slavia Prague plays against Olomot. So I think Liberate Lib will really get in there. I think Slavia looks pretty uh, cool in making the winning the championship. I don't think that uh, Pilsen probably has an outside chance for that. Next one, the Netherlands. It has been a long time and I said I'm wearing Ajax because it has been an Ajax week. Um, they got a narrow win and PSV got uh, also a 3-1. They are they are head-to-head. -head. Ajax 77 points with 107 goal scores to 28, PSV 92 to 24. Those two are in the Champions League and it's super, super tight who will win. Let's just check the 538 numbers for the Netherlands. Then we have one more leak. 84% um, Ajax, 60% PSV. This is only because of the ratings. I think it's much, much tighter. Feyenoord, 59. Alkmaar is probably in the Europa League. And then there's a whole Europa League playoff. 52. Alkmaar, Her uh, Heracles, Almelo, 48. Vitesse, 47. Utrecht, 47. I think those will be the ones because Willem Twee already has a three-point difference so yeah the dutch league uh looks interesting and the last one is greece where we have a champion and i'm very happy to end on this note pauk 
are the new Greek champions. Uh, first time since I think 85. They have it secured. Olympiakos also is, has secured their second spot for the uh, Champions League. 77 Pauk, 72 Olympiakos, Aik 54 and Atromitos 52 look like made for the Europa League spots. I don't think Aris will get in there. Note that Paratinaikos, one of the big teams, is really, really low at 33 points. Uh, they won't probably be troubled by relegation, but they are not too far away from that zone. Well, I promised a thorough roundup of all the European leagues. It has been a long video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what I should do for next week. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.